Hi guys and welcome to my March uh, reading wrap up. This is one of a couple of them that I'm going to do um, because there are two readathons I tried to participate on low key. I will go over what books I read for what prompts. Pretty much all of the books that I read for the month of March covered at least one prompt in um, all of the readathons. There may have been one or two exceptions if that. Um, but just in case it's like you're not interested in those readathons or whatever, so those are there if you are interested in those particular readathons. Um, I just don't want these videos to be super long, so I am breaking it up like that. So, and just watch if you want. If not, that's cool too. Okay, so this one is for the March My Catwalk TBR game. So, if you saw my uh, TBR for the Aurelian Magical Readathon. You will already know this, so this will just be a quick, um, I'll try and keep it quick, repetition. Um, I did not read everything for the Catwalk TBR. I was in, in a bit of a slump. Part of it was I was so stressed because my grandma fell. This is my grandma that lives in Colorado, um, and she has been in the hospital for about a week now. Um, had to get stitches and shattered her knee and it just it's just been a mess. Had to have a couple of blood transfusions. So I've been stressed and I've not been in the mood to read. So because of that, I am giving myself a pass on any punishments. Now, that does not mean these books will go back on my shelf and read them whenever. This means I am carrying the carrying them over into the month of April. Now, uh I am going to go and visit my grandma for a week. Um, I'm going with my mom. So during, that's like a whole week of very little, if any, reading that I am assuming that I will get done. Um, we'll probably pretty much stay in the house if she's up for it. We'll play Yahtzee and this card game called Nine Down is what we play. Um, and if we're not doing that, more than likely we will be watching whatever she wants to on TV. So game shows, forensic files, um, something like that. Uh, maybe some like Andy Griffith or, um, oh, she loves keeping up appearances that has the, um, the bouquet residence, even though it's bucket, but it's the bouquet residence. Um, she loves that show. So if we catch that, that's a definite watch. Um, so I don't know. We'll kind of see. So these, the books that I did not complete for my Catwalk TBR, will I will try to read what I can in April, but I am participating in the Illyrium or the Magical Readathon that's hosted by G, and then whatever I don't finish from that readathon and whatever I roll over from my Catwalk March Catwalk TBR will will roll over into May. Um, and the reason I say that is because I'm not going to do a catwalk TBR for May as well. It should resume, my game should resume in June. Um, I am hosting Horror Mayhem, or I'm a co-host, I'm not hosting it by myself, I'm a co-host for Horror Mayhem. And the goal is to read as many horror books as you would like, and as you are able to. My goal is to read at least one per week. Um, so I just want to get all three months done and then out of a combination of the three um, so the remainder for Catwalk TBR whatever I don't read for the Illyrium and the four books that I say are mandatory that I have to read in May if I don't get all of those done whatever's uncompleted will then count towards a punishment for June. Um, it'll kind of make sense um, especially as June uh, whenever it is that I do my June TBR. So, out of, uh, I ended up, so I started out with five dice rolls to get five prompts. I landed on YouTube two times, and for YouTube, it's, for these particular ones, it's had an additional three prompts. Those three prompts come directly off of a, another BookTubers TBR game. Um, so the first one, um, I'll get to those in a moment. So let's, out of all of the 11, 11 prompts, I've only read four books completed. Now, let me go ahead and tell you what I have completed. I do have one that will be finished this month. So it'll be to five completed books. So seeing that I was in a slump from stress, I'm counting that as a win. <laughs> um, it's, yeah. So, okay. 
So the um, first prompt to fulfill, I landed on a paw print, which is a random generator. Um, I ended up with random color, which was a purple. So for that one, I'll try and insert like right here an image because it's already put away. Um, I did read People Like Her, and this is kind of like a mystery thriller by Ellery Lloyd. Um, and I gave that one 3.75. I actually liked that one. You're following the life of, I don't even remember the name right off, but because my mind is just a muddled mess right now, but um, you're following a big Instagrammer who is big because she talks about life as a mother, even though a lot of this is staged. Um, it just kind of goes into like her fans who are fake fans, fake friends, maybe even a stalker. Um, definite trigger warning though for suicide, self-harm, um, death of a child, like baby, toddler, baby, and attempted death of a child and baby as well. So that it was definitely harder hitting, but um, I did give that 3.75. Um, okay, moving on. Another prompt that I was able to fulfill was Blue Ribbon. So a book that I thought had a beautiful cover. I read A Cozy Mystery, and I gave this book five stars, which is Lending a Paw. It is a cat bookmobile mystery series. I think there's nine out right now, and I think the tenth book in the series is supposed to come out at some point this year. Um, but Lending a Paw, we're following this woman as she is a librarian for this small town. She's relatively new. Typical cozy mystery stuff. She has a cat named Eddie. Um, she's able to get funds to have a bookmobile to go into the like, outskirts of this little town into even smaller towns where they don't have a library or where their library was shut down. Um, and her cat, Eddie ends up going along for the ride and they find a dead body and it just goes from there. So, but I absolutely loved it. It made me want to go back and work in the library again. Uh, five stars. Okay. The next prompt that was another blue ribbon. So another beautiful cover for that one. I read Razzle Dazzle Unicorn. This is the, is it the fourth? Sorry, it's still on my it's buried <laughs> on my nightstand. It's the fourth book in Phoebe and Her Unicorn. I still need to do the review, which I plan on doing today. But the fourth book in the Phoebe and Her Unicorn series, it's just a graphic novel, very colorful. I like the artwork in it. It's simple. It's not overly done. Um, and I just, I don't know, I really like it. It kind of, the artwork kind of reminds me of the um, comic series Foxtrot. I have four books of those, so I do hope to get to those. Four, five, four books of those. I have already read and I want to reread those. I absolutely love the Foxtrot comic series. So anyway, it kind of reminds me of that as far as the art style, but um, Razzle, I don't remember the author for Foxtrot, but Razzle Dazzle Unicorn was by Dana Simpson. I gave it four stars. I love it. Is it the best that I've read? Well, it's a graphic novel and as far as all the graphic novels I've read, it's pretty dang good. So four stars. I don't know if I'll ever get a graphic novel. I mean, Foxtrot, I may end up giving like five stars, but that's purely mostly nostalgia. But in all honesty, I don't know if manga and graphic novels will go above that. I don't, above four star, I don't know. But I do love this series and I look to continue on with it. I look forward to continuing on with the Phoebe and her unicorn. Okay. Now, I'm just going to go down the list, because um, I do have all of my prompts written here. So, we're going to finish for the for the ones not including YouTube. So, the next one is the prompt that I landed on was Catnip, which is to read a book that is less than or equal to 250 pages. For that, I selected Ransom by Lois Duncan. So, as you can see, I do have a bookmark. I am currently reading this one. I am on page 154. And there is 172 pages. So this will definitely be done for the month of March. So this is going to be counted as completed. Right now it's sitting at about a three star. So basically, now this book was written in um, 19... Oh, was it published in 66, I think? Yes, 1966 is when it was originally published. Um, so there are some things in the text that are outdated as far as there's a lot of there's reference to calling someone on their their phone but it's referencing obviously like a landline a lot of people use cell phones now um, station wagon you don't hear in a lot of modern 
books anymore. Um, and the ransom being asked for these kids is like $15,000 a head. That's one five. Well, that's not very much. <laughs> but back then it was a ton. And it, today it would be more like them wanting probably fifty to seventy five hundred thousand dollars a head. Um, these are supposedly the kids from the richest area in uh, New Mexico in this particular town. And I, I, I can't remember if it was Albuquerque or a town out of Albuquerque. I think it was Albuquerque. I probably, I don't remember because it was only mentioned like once. But yeah, so kids are kidnapped, they're being held hostage, and the people want money to get those kids returned. So that's, I am reading this. I am enjoying it. I'm listening to the audiobook. I do not recommend the audiobook. For one, there's an editing issue with the audiobook I got from Audible, so it's an Audible original, where like almost a whole paragraph is eliminated with this very deep growly voice saying one sentence, but even then you can't understand what is said. And it's a woman that narrates it, so definite editing issue. The other issue I have with the audiobook versus this book, which I'll go into it more for the wrap-up that I filmed for this, but basically they've tried to update certain things, like instead of saying station wagon, they say van. And certain sentences are deleted when it's like, well, no, that sentence is relevant to the story, it should be in there. I don't recommend the audiobook, but I do, I, I am enjoying this. It'll probably end up being a three star. Um, but yeah, anyway, okay. So currently reading that will be done in March. Um, okay, so the next prompt I landed on was a paw print, so another random generator, and I got random word generator, and the random word was common. For this one, I selected um, a common author that I have heard about quite a bit on YouTube, or on YouTube um, and that's I selected Final Girls by Riley Sager. I did not get to this one, hence why I still have this. It's not put away yet. Um, yeah, so, but this, this is definitely one that will continue on into April. So I will definitely roll this over. All of these books that I don't, haven't completed will roll over into the next two months. So, okay. Okay, so those were all the books for my, for the five prompts, not including like the YouTube where I add three prompts. So when I get the YouTube, I pull out of a jar a YouTuber who has a TBR game. Some of these they haven't posted for a long time. Um, and I don't know if they still even make, make videos or are done or just taking a break or whatever. And some of them are current and post a while. Some of them um, I have in there that I know they still are continuing to make videos for uh, BookTube. But they've quit doing the TBR game. So... It's just, I just pull up, when I pull their um, channel and name out, then I just go with their most recent TBR game, however old it is. And then I pick however many prompts I'm told to pick from that game. So, for the level of Catwalk TBR that I was on, it's three prompts, both of these for each YouTube, because I got it twice, or three, so it's an additional six books. Okay, um, so the first um, YouTuber I got was... Ziva from Ziva Reads, and this was from um, her TB Darts game, and the video that I watched for these prompts was posted in July of 2021, so it is a little bit older. The first prompt out of all of the ones that she did that I selected was a friend pick or a booktuber's favorite. For that one, um, I'm going to move over because I'll have to, it's put away, I'll put an image. I selected Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I say Evelyn, not Evelyn, because the narrator of the book says Evelyn, and I listened to the audiobook as I read along physically, and they say Evelyn. Um, I ended up giving that one four stars. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, as far as a booktuber's favorite, I don't know which booktuber absolutely loves it, but I do know it is very well liked. I have seen a lot of people rave about that. So it is someone's favorite. <laughs> so that's why I went with that one. Okay. And that's the last book that I, out of my Catwalk TBR that I actually read in the month of March. Now we're going to go on. The next prompt I selected from uh, Ziva Reads is a specific book. 
um, that was the prompt that she got. She had a specific book that she wanted to read, so I kind of used that as a freebie for something that I just wanted to read. I selected The Other People by C.J. Tudor. Again, this will be rolling over, and hopefully I'll be, be completing it soon. Okay, and then the final prompt from Ziva Reads that I selected was a book that has the word fire in the title. And for that one, I went with Girls of Paper and Fire. Obviously not completed. I've kind of lost interest in this one. But... Um, I still I still do want to read it as far as lost interest. I'm not as excited about it. And um, I got this from a book subscription box quite a while ago. And so I, I know this is the first in the series, so I will read it. Hopefully I'll enjoy it. And then hopefully maybe enjoy it, because you always want to enjoy the books. So I would hope to enjoy it enough to get the next book in the series, which I don't know what that book is, but... Yeah, so that's going over. Okay, so that's all the prompts I selected from Ziva Reads. The second YouTuber that I drew out of the jar was uh, Melanie from Completely Melanie. And she has a couple of different TBR games, so her name and channel is in my jar a lot, and I have it listed for which exactly game it is. This one was um, Cards Against My TBR. So I watched that one, and the first prompt that she got that I selected was having the worst day ever, hashtag, and then you fill in the blank. I went with hashtag witch hunt. Um, this is a cozy mystery by Kate Conti. Um, obviously did not read that, but we'll roll this over. Which I don't know if I, I sh really shouldn't have to say roll over. There's only two more books to mention and they'll both be rolling over. So there I've said it. Okay. The second prompt I selected from Cards Against My TBR is Don't Miss Rachel Ray's Hot New Cooking Show with, and I selected with, The First Girl Child. Um, I think this one's a horror thriller, something like that. But this is by um, Amy Harmon. So, kind of a creepy cover, I will admit that, uh, but that just intrigues me even more. I do like the creepy covers, and I like the cute, cute ones too, and kind of nothing in between <laughs> grabs me quite as much. Uh, I mean, I do like them, but not like those. Anyway, um, the final prompt that I selected was Cheesy Crunchies. For that one, I went with something with food on the cover, or in the title, uh, that's crunchy, crunchy food. And for this one, I selected uh, Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder. This is another cozy mystery. This is the first in the series, I know. And this is by Joanne Fluke, and I know she's got a lot out in this series. But this one's the first one in the series, so I really do want to get to this one. Um, and I like how this chocolate chip is in, the, like, a skull. Um, there's one more on the back that's a skull right there. A little bit, but chocolate chips. Chocolate chip cookie murder. So that's it for my March Catwalk TBR. Again, those that I did not read are going to roll over into April. And then whatever's not completed in April, I will try to complete by the end of May <laughs> so that I don't have to take any punishments. But we'll see um, how that goes. So I do want to read these. I hope to get to them and not have to take any punishments for my June TBR, but only time will tell, so we'll see how they go, but I will hold on to my page that I have of the prompts. What I'll do is I'll probably just scribble out the ones that I have read um, and have already said, yes, I've done these and, and all of that. That way I still have the prompts and then come whenever I do the final wrap-up, for when I complete these ones, hopefully again by the end of May, then I'll have them as a reminder for what prompts they were. So we'll see, still kind of toying with how to do that. So hopefully stress will start to diminish and dissipate. Um, but yeah, so I think out of that whole stack, honestly, I am most excited to hopefully get to the Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder uh, book soon. And again, I will finish Ransom by Lois Duncan this month sitting at like a three star right now. So I would just say plan on a three star, but I will do a review video for it 
um, as soon as I finish this book. So hopefully today, maybe tomorrow, um, but I'm kind of thinking of three stars. So, But yeah, if you want more information on it, then definitely keep an eye out for the review video for it. So that'll be it for this uh, March Catwalk TBR wrap-up. Uh, what was your favorite book that you read in March? Until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book, and I'll talk to you later.